Welcome to the channel. Thanks guys for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed videos before. This one's one I've been looking forward to making for quite a while. This is my 81 Miller LS Swap jet boat that has just been my fun haver. It's probably one of my favorite things that I own. So years ago, I bought a boat and it never saw the water. And it's just been kind of a, a one of those things that I thought, well, I'll, I'll get a boat someday. And as I had kids and life happens and thought, yeah, it's never going to happen. We had some, i uh, call it disposable income fall in our laps. And I get on Marketplace. I'm sitting at home sick one day and I start scrolling around and I come across two boats. One of them's red and I really not that great. And then there's the Miller that I got and it just popped. So I messaged the guy and he gets back to me pretty quick. So I start negotiating with him, start trying to figure out what's he going to take. You know, I'm, I'm a typical car guy. We're going to, we're going to lowball him. Not really, but I'm going to try to get the best deal that I can. It has no engine in it, but he's got a built big block that's like 11 and a half to one compression and, you know, all this stuff. I thought, yeah, that's cool until it breaks. And then you just throw your wallet out there. Big blocks can get expensive. And I've got LS parts for days. I got pistons laying over here. I got a cam. I've got rockers and heads and, you know, I've got LS parts all over the place. It's just what I like. It's what I build. I ask him, could I buy it without the engine? We finally come to a price and he says, yeah, I'm good. I said, okay, we pick a date, start heading up there. So I take my youngest son, Zach, with me. He's as excited as I am, maybe more. Hey, Dad, what are we doing? We getting a boat. Oh, yeah. Boat money. Oh, yeah. Oh, boat. As we pull up, there it is. There's the boat. And I tell you, my heart's pounding. I'm like, man, here it is. This is awesome. And at the time, these boats, they, there's a few out there, but they're wanting ridiculous money. I mean, way up there. I mean, $30,000. We start walking around the boat. It is beautiful. I mean, it, this boat is just awesome. It's everything that I thought it would be until I lift up the seat and there's these wood ants and wood ants are a big, nasty animal anyway, and they just chew through everything. Luckily, the only parts yeah. that are wood on this are the seat bases. There's nothing else. It's all fiberglass otherwise. I'm a little bit discouraged, but not enough to say no. So I shell out the cash. He writes me a bill of sale. We hook up, we're out of there. I pull it in the shop the very next day. Let's get started on it. I've got an old LS, which is right here now. And I said, okay, we're just gonna fit it in there. So I get everything fit. The back motor mount and bell housing, that piece works. It's all the same for all Chevy, so it works. The front motor plate, I said, okay, I'll call a place in California called Harden Marine. They don't have anything. This is the midst of 2020. We're talking COVID lockdown. Nobody has parts. Nobody's able to get me anything. I said, okay, I call, I get a hold of ICT billet and I get one of their universal motor plates. Let's see if we can make it work. I get it on there, set it in, get it bolted in, start making things fit, get it all dialed in to where it sets there. Then I switch gears, go over to a wiring harness. And there's another reason why I love LS. I've got wiring harnesses. Every time I go to the, the junkyard and I find an engine that has a, a non-molested harness and computer, I grab it and come home with it. So we switch gears and go, what, what am I going to put in this thing? Which engine? I've got a couple of engines laying around, but I've got my blazer that runs fine. Let's tear it apart. But I pull the engine out, I put it in, get it all set, and I, I did a lot of pre-work for about a week. Then I do all the, the actual work and put it in and get the fuel system set. Now, 
The next day, we're going to the lake. I've got to get this thing running. Okay, Dad, what are we about to do? I'm gonna try to fire it up. I got a little fuel leak. Got a fix. Get it going. So at 6 30 in the morning the, the thing's sitting in the shop I wish I had the camera going and I remember saying a little prayer saying all right let everything go okay I hope this works I hit the key boom it fires off and I'm talking in my sheet metal metal building shop it was loud the sun is just coming up over the horizon and I mean boom I fired it up shut it off wow it, it actually ran that was it, it just started, you know, it just kind of popped a couple of times. Pull it out, I didn't sleep at all. We take it to the lake after getting it fired up and getting a real rough tune in it. Get it to the lake, had a couple of friends meet us there, got a friend with a lake house. We put it in the water, fire it up, it's spraying water from all kinds of different places, especially the front of the engine where the motor plate's bolted on. Uh, I got very minimal tools, like, great. All this work, my friends are there, you know, my pride's hurt. I've waited this many years for a boat. Here it is. Great. So we pull it out, threw in the towel. So, a little bit of leaky water, that's not going to stop us. Get the boat home. I decide, let's see what's going on. It was a simple fix. The bolts that hold the water adapters on the front of the engine and sandwich the motor plate together were just a hair too long, that's all it was. So the gaskets wouldn't seal. Two weeks later, we get the boat back out. We go to Ray Roberts, hour north of us. Big lake, open water, I'm thinking we're gonna be able to rip. So we get it out there, drop it in the water. I'm a bundle of nerves, because we've already had that one day. We had nothing go right, everything was giving us a fit, and what's going through my head is what's next. So you get it on the water, fire it up. It's not running right, but you don't have to get it right, you just gotta get it running. We get it on the water, start cruising around, having a little bit of fun and then all the nerves go away. All right, very first time out in the water. We couldn't really rip it too hard though. The water was extremely rough. I mean, just beating us to death. We're talking little shallow bottom boat, so it's gonna just bounce off the water. So you can see from the videos, the smiles speak for themselves. Everyone had a good time.
Day two, Ray Roberts out on the water. We get up in the morning, water's a little calmer, still windy, still choppy, but we just enjoyed ourselves, made the best of it, had a fun time. We took it out a few more times that year, didn't get a lot of footage of it, just decided to enjoy the family time. Last trip out, I could start hearing this little tapping noise. And then all winter long, I kept thinking, eh, I'm not comfortable with that. I yanked the engine out of it, I open it up, and there's a rod bearing, and it is just paper thin. And what happened is water had got into the knock sensors and got water in the oil, thinned it out and wiped out that rod bearing. All the rest had a bunch of signs of water damage in them and the cam was pitted. What do you do? You go ahead and rebuild it. Cam's pitted, might as well go bigger. So I have the heads rebuilt. I go with a, a different set of springs, go with a different cam, all fresh, prettied it up and painted it my favorite color, Chevy orange. we got it all dialed in, got the engine dropped in. Then Zach and I decide we're gonna head out during the week Go to Lake Whitney, it was a calm, hot day. We figured we'd rip around, have a good time. We're sitting in downtown Cleburne at a light, and boom, some guy rear ends us, and thinking, okay, everyone's okay. But I look back and I can see the bow of the boat sticking up above the, the bed of the truck. Well, the, the cable that, that winches the boat up onto the trailer ripped right through the bow of the boat, and it ripped a gash in the bottom of that boat about 12 or 16 inches long. So off to the fiberglass shop. All summer long, the boat's in the shop and going back and forth with fiberglass because it's just like any repair, especially on an older boat. As they got into it, there were more problems. They didn't know if it was caused by the wreck or not, but they paid for it. So the whole bottom of that boat's been redone. Then I get it back. They can't find someone to rebuild the jet. They say, well, the boat's too old. So after some negotiating, getting estimates together, all that, I did the jet, insurance paid me to do it. We go through the jet, everything's good, replace the, the place diverter on it because it was cracked from the impact. Finally, boat's done. It's September, you know, it's the end of the summer. The next week, I said, Zach, you wanna go out on the boat again? Of course he says yes. Called my Uncle Phil, good old Uncle Phil comes down, brings his 90s jet ski. We go rip around on the water and spent all day out there. Water was cold, but that's okay. It was still a good day on the water. That's been probably one of my favorite toys that I've ever bought. I've wanted one for so long and I'm, I'm just happy, happy, happy with it. Anyhow, we'll probably have some more videos of the boat coming up. LS Fest is this weekend. Got to get the Monte Carlo done. It'll be at the show. The boat will be at the show. Also, the 54 GMC for my first video, that'll be at the show. I enjoyed making the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Give us a like, subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for everyone who has. Let's keep growing this channel. Let's we'll see if we can get something made of it. Sure appreciate you guys. Have a great one.